Hello, and welcome to another edition of The Tigers Down Under. I'm your host, as always, Alex, and with me today I have Dan. How are you, Dan? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. The season has come around quite quickly. It's here. It's uh, starting up again this Saturday after it only feels like a couple of weeks, a couple of months off. Um, it's gone by quite quickly. Um, we'll, we'll run through the last of the preseason um, results and activity before we look ahead to that Swansea game. So we've had two games since the last episode, I believe. We've had a loss to um, Amiens, a French team, um, with where we played quite a young side against them. Uh, and then we had a pretty, um, you know, encouraging, I guess you'd say, draw with Doncaster. It would be sort of... We've had a lot of 2-2 two, two draws. I think it kind of shows there's still a lot of concern around our defence. A lot of people have sort of compared it to how we were under Slutsky with um, not being able to keep clean sheets and conceding a couple of goals. But at least positive to sort of see the structure starting to work in, going forward at least. Um, the first goal that Irvine scored was a really impressive sort of one-touch passing from the team. Dicko looking really sharp up top, um, sort of at the head of that move. Uh, and then Josh Bowler with the second goal. So really good to see him on the score sheet and, and, and sort of pushing for that starting place and really fighting um, Bowen and Grizicki for those wide spots. Yeah, I think, um, I, I mean, I always sort of say with preseason, you never really read too much into it, um, into the results. It's more about the performance. Um, and I think even in the, the game against Army and it, it, I don't think the performance was terrible from what I um, from what I read. It seemed like it was um, reasonably encouraging, um, you know, when you consider that we played a very young side. I think that was the game. Was that the game Dan Batty captained? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so, you know... Um, it says a lot when he's when sort of you, your most experienced player on the pitch, I guess. Yeah, I think, but when you, you take some of these things into consideration, um, you know... A loss in preseason doesn't really matter so much. It's more about I think that was McCann's opportunity just to see some of the how some of the other young guys are going to fit into the system and how and just see some different combinations. So I think over the course of the whole preseason, um, I I would imagine he's been able to get a pretty good look at what he's got to work with. Um, he's we've just steadily you know grabbed a couple of extra players. Sean McLaughlin's just signed. He's still looking for others but not nothing um he sort of said um in the media that um uh, unless it's the right deal then they're not going to go chasing anyone in particular so um he said he's you know if this was the squad that he has that he's then he's happy enough that he's happy with them um but i think um overall i mean it is good to see um Bauer come in and, and get a goal and um, you're right that that helps put a little bit of pressure on um, Grisicki and Bowen um, not sure what um, uh, what Milinkovic has contributed to preseason. I yeah it doesn't seem a whole lot so it's a bit mm. um, disappointing that he hasn't really been able to take that opportunity as well as people might have hoped that he could Mm, um, yeah, I was hoping that, you know, with, with a fresh manager and, you know, that opportunity for a fresh start um, and hopefully with a bit of reflection about the issues that were had last season mm. with Adkins and the perceived, you know, lack of effort from Milinkovic and, and things that he might have, you know, got off on the right foot. But, I mean, I don't know the particulars of whatever's happening, but, he, yeah, I just haven't seen his name um, mentioned a lot. I know he played in a couple of the early ones, I think, but I still, I just don't, um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really seen his name mentioned much. Um, I think overall, um, that that defense is still something that that's got, is, is obviously still a work in progress. Um, and hopefully as, as, um, the season progresses, hopefully not too far into the season, but that'll start to tighten up, um, as we get uh, a sense of, of a stable first 11 team. Yeah, and so you've mentioned there uh, on the transfers front, we've signed Sean McLaughlin from um, uh, Cork, I think it was, over in Ireland. Um, young, promising centre-back. Uh, looks like he's sort of been pursued for a little while from a few different clubs. Um, I think my, my understanding is that he's going to get loaned out, so I think he's sort of viewed as one for the future, but he's, you know 
um, I guess in that mould of the, you know, the Harry Maguires or, or so on that we've signed in the past uh, as a young prospect, and then they've sort of worked into the team over the over the ensuing year or two. Um, that's that's quite a promising one, um, and we're also linked with Jack Hendry on loan from Celtic. I think he's sort of hasn't really pulled up any roots at Celtic, so he's being looked at at going out on loan. So at least in terms of uh, centre backs, at least we're looking quite well stocked. Um, and I know we've been linked to Herbie Kane at Liverpool uh, in recent days. I think McCann has said that he'd be quite keen to get a move done um, in regards to Herbie if he can. Um, I think it's interesting as well. I know um, Henriksen was left out of the friendly against Doncaster, I think it was, um, to sort of get a look at Terrell's uh, potential for starting games. Um, in particular, I guess, with the assumption that Henriksen might be moving late in the window. Uh, and I think for the same reason, Lehigh has been named our new captain um, to sort of uh, anticipate any sort of late moves for Henriksen and not leaving us a bit flat-footed in that respect. Um, I, I guess it's in some ways it's a little bit frustrating when you look at the fact that the, the captain's potentially going to get sold quite late in the window um, and that there's not really a whole lot of, you know, movement to, to either, either tie him down now to a new two-year deal or something like that or else sort of bring in a replacement and, and try and force the move through a little bit earlier so that we can actually have a bit of a sense of, of how the squad's going to look um, when the window closes. Yeah, I think, I mean, Henriksen was one which I think we sort of knew from like it, from the end of last, and at the end of last season, we sort of knew he was going to be one that was, you know, was going to be hanging in the balance as the window went on because was La at the um, mid-season window... He got he linked with a move to to France, I think. Yeah. Didn't, yeah, yes, and yeah. um and it didn't quite happen. But um, I was sort of under the impression that they were maybe going to come back and have another another go. But um, it doesn't seem like I haven't I haven't read anything that 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 has eventuated. But the um the fact that he is, I mean, he's in. They said that he's in the last twelve months of his deal. He's there, you know. You gotta kind of get the feeling that if if an offer comes in, then the club's going to seriously consider it. He's going to be he's what got to be one of the highest wage earners um, at the clubs now, um, and now we're operating on that significantly reduced budget. Um, that's going to be something to consider. But um, I think just the uncertainty over you know his his long term position within the club is is the real reason that he's he's lost that armband. Um, but Lehigh, I mean. He's a he'll be a good um, a good deputy there for us. So um, he's a very experienced experienced guy. Um, so he'll I no, I mean no problems with the um, with the appointment of him. Um, and, and I guess in terms of signings, um, I know you said McGann's sort of happy with the squad that he has, but how are you feeling in terms of the depth? I, I feel like, you know, we've essentially got two strikers up top. I guess, arguably, you've got Lewis Potter as a third striker, but as an 18-year-old, he's you know, unproven. He's not exactly going to be, you know, hugely reliable if, if, for instance, knock on wood, if Eves went down with a three-month injury or something and you've only got Dicko playing up top on his own, um, it just doesn't seem very, um, very, very much um, security or depth in that position. We've lost Campbell, Martin and um, Ke and um, Keane, yeah, uh, over the summer. So it does make that position a little bit concerning. And I guess as well, fullbacks are probably the, the next major concern. I know, I think it's Ben Marshall, who we were linked to a few times when he was at Norwich, has just been released. So there's a possibility... That uh, that we could potentially get him in as a, as a free transfer. Uh, and I know he can sort of play back up at right back, uh, or he, he could play at right back. Um, so he, he'd provide a bit of depth there. But it just seems like, you know, in one or two positions, we probably just need a touch more depth. Yeah. Um, as, I think definitely with the full backs, there's not really enough. I mean, overall, I mean, we probably do need another striker. Um, but I know I was just reading this morning that like McCann, his, what he said about the forwards is he's got six players to fit into three spots, which I guess, and, and that's without counting um, Keen Lewis that? Potter, I believe. Dicko, Dicko so, Eves, Bowler, Grzycki, Bowen, and Malinkovic, Malinkovic. I guess. Yeah, yeah. so then you, you add Keen Lewis Potter, so you got the seventh, um, but it's but still that, not really... Is that really it's, saying, I mean... 
Yeah, I don't I really think that's. That. A, I don't yeah. really know if that's enough. Um, I, I don't really get that through... logic because I mean, could Grzyki play as a striker? I don't think so. So then you're not really saying that any of those six could play in any of those three positions. You're really yeah, saying I think... you've got four for the two wingers and then two for the strikers. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think what he said was if he was going to get another forward, he'd be looking for someone who could play across, right. um, either play in a, in a, like play centrally or play wire. But um, who knows? I think yeah, I, I don't know if um, two seniors and an eighteen-year-old is going to be enough um, to get us through forty-six games. To be honest. Um, I mean, and... knowing the club, I know we do like our sort of deadline day loan moves. So I think with the fact that we've still got those loan spots free, um, I, I'd, I'd assume that the club is sort of looking at, at potentially getting a senior striker in on loan as one of those sorts of moves. Once once all the pieces on the chessboard move around a bit and it's a bit clearer on who's sort of um, access to requirements at some of the bigger clubs, uh, we might be looking at trying to get one of them across. Sort of, sort of the same as Chris Martin last year, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's entirely possible. Um, but I guess, uh, yeah, that fullbacks is um, is an area that does concern me. Um, I mean, centrally we're we're not in a bad position. Um, I guess McDonald should be back, like back into training and and work back into fitness of, it, of, to some capacity because he yeah. missed out a lot with that um, DVT issue last season. Because so, um, I think at the moment at centre-back, we've got what? We've got Burke, we've got Device, we've got Tafazoli, we've got, uh, uh, well, McLaughlin, but if he's going to go out on loan, and then, yeah, McDonald. So at the moment, we've got three centre-backs. Oh, and then I guess you could throw in McKenzie, I think, but he sort of plays more as a wide as a right back, I guess, um, which I so then I can understand the link to Hendry, for instance. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's it's an interesting one. I'm just, I mean, I just hope that um, if we bring anyone else in, they just they fill the right spots and they um, perform perform well through the season. Um, I think it was good to see um, Sheaf just went out on loan yeah, for six yeah. months uh, to get some bit of first. Yeah. Yeah, to get a bit of first team experience, so that'll be good for him. Um, it'll be interesting to see if any of the other young guys um, get an opportunity out outside the club as well. Yeah, and I think there's been a bit of talk that I think um, Greaves will go out on loan as well. McGann seems to really rate him quite highly, so he's he's another promising one that looks to be going out on loan. It's interesting. I know that in recent years we've done those sort of three month or six month loans, but generally have been preferred to sort of bring the kids through the under 23s, which I don't necessarily mind. I think there's an argument for, for and against that. I know, I think it was Roberto Martinez, Roberto Martinez or someone had a comment on loan moves where he was sort of commenting on the fact that when you send players out on loan, yeah, they'll get that senior experience, but they're playing for another manager who isn't necessarily going to play your system or your style, is a manager who's potentially going to be under pressure, so might then drop that loan E for a player um, so, so for instance, in our position with, you know, we've got Bowler on loan from Everton, but we could be playing a completely different style and system to Everton. You know, if we're sort of struggling during the season, we're going to probably drop Bowler from the system because he's just a kid. He's, you know, on loan. He's not necessarily going to be someone who's going to be able to help us out. Um, whereas if you play them through the under 23s, you've got complete control over what, what position they play, what minutes they play, um, what style they're playing, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, and then you can sort of much more seamlessly bring them into the senior team, which we've seen with a number of the under-23s coming through. So uh, it's an interesting sort of debate about which is the better system to use. So it's going to be interesting to see if McGann sort of favours giving them that senior taste for six months and then potentially bringing them back in and, and giving them a go in the firsts. Yeah, I think that the loan system really is, it's a sort of a risk versus reward thing. Like, um you can play them all year in the 23s, but will they get as much growth as if mm. they play, you know, 10 games of senior football at another club? It's hard. To, it's a it's a real it's a hard hard question to answer. But um, uh, yeah, and I guess like all the points you made that there's no guarantee once they leave the club that they will get the game time that you're hoping that they do. So, but I think just generally like it's also like a like a football versus like 
professional growth as well. Like it's good for them to go outside of the club and experience um, working with other managers and other players and, and other systems. So I, I can, there's some, um, some other yeah. positives um, apart from just the club's like footballing interests at stake. So yeah, no, fair enough. It's going to be interesting. We've got, um, I think a bit over a week left. I think the window shuts um, just before the first Premier League game. So what's that? I guess about ten days left in the window. I think it's August tenth. At a guess is the is the deadline day. So I'm sure the club will be, you know, typically busy um, organising loan moves into the club, out of the club, potentially some late signings. Who knows? Um, so yes, it's going to be very interesting times. Um, but we've got our first taste of. Uh, league football coming up this weekend, which is very exciting. Um, and it's a team that we, we've played um, previously on the opening day of a championship season. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit, bit about our um, football flashback in, in a second, but we'll, we'll look ahead to the, to the main meeting um, currently, which is against Swansea um, over at the Liberty. And they're managed by Steve Cooper, who I think most, most recently was with the England under 19s. So, um, Swansea, to me, I mean, before recording this episode, I sort of was starting to read a little bit into their off-season, and to me, Swansea, I actually thought were travelling a little bit better than they are, and when you look at the, the ins and outs of the club, um, they've they've obviously had to shed a lot of their squad for um, financial reasons, and we've been going through that ourselves the last few years, but they've um, obviously sold Daniel James to United, which we've pocketed a little bit from, um, but Leroy Fair... Bonnie, I, Jordan Ayew most recently has gone to Crystal Palace. Um, they've they've lost a lot of quite good players and they haven't really brought anyone in. I think they've only signed two players for the summer so far. Um, so it's a club that's clearly going undergoing quite a lot of transformation and, um, you know, potentially like us, will be making some late moves in the window to bolster their squad. Um, so quite potentially quite beneficial to be playing them the first game of the season where we might be able to catch them flat-footed. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's a good point. Um, that it's, I mean, it's always, I guess it's always a risk when you put, when we, whenever we play teams in trend, like in that transition moment, I always get worried because it can sort of go either way. But when you look at, um, normally it's just like that there's a change of manager or something and that's the transition. But when you lose so many of those, um, quality senior players from that squad, um, that's gonna that has to have an impact um i guess like the only thing that counts like against us is that you know we're two months into mccann's reign as 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 manager um so i guess we are still a work in progress ourselves but um i mean i'm i'm hopeful that on the weekend that we can go out and just give a good account of ourselves you know get 90 minutes of championship football out of the way um i'd be happy with a point to be honest um but I do. I mean, you're right. It is an opportunity, definitely, to to start the season well and and take three. Um, but I would be happy with. I'd be. I'd, I'd take a point if we um played the played good football and we and we, um you know and worked worked on the system um that McCann's trying to to get us to play. And remarkably, um, something we didn't touch on before, Newcastle was scouting Bowen against Amiens during the uh, the week, I believe, um, and have sort of balked a little bit at, at our twenty million dollar, twenty million pound, I should say, valuation of him. Um, so remarkably, he may well line up against Swansea for us. Um, what what are your sort of thoughts on the lineup and and Bowen potentially pulling on a city shirt for this this opening game? Um, I think. I think the club has finally, for whatever reason, <laughs> has decided that they're going to draw a line in the sand when it comes to letting some of these players leave. Um, because, you know, they earlier in the window it was Grisicki and they said, we're not going to look at a- any offer under, I think, four million pounds is what they yeah. said. So, you know, and now to say, look, this is our young youngest player. He's been our leading goal scorer two seasons in a row last year, you know, ch- team of the year, like all of these accolades on him and they've said, you know, 20 million or nothing, you know, um, and that has put off a couple of players. There, I was actually, I was concerned, you know, because Steve Bruce took over at Newcastle and you're going, oh, you know, is that connection going to come back into play? He, I think he was the one who brought Bowen to the yeah. club, um, you know. So it was, uh, 
I was a little concerned there for a little while, and then they they sent the scouts. But that um, I mean those that numbers those numbers have deterred Newcastle. Um, whether they'll deter, I don't. I'm not really sure. It doesn't seem to be that there are any like of the bigger like or more financially flexible clubs or whatever like that they're interested in um in taking him but that doesn't mean that they that someone won't but i think um i I think there's a good chance that he will line up again um and that makes me very happy i get to wear a nice big smile to see uh, you know seeing bowen in a city shirt again so um very hopeful um i think I think we we will we've got a reasonably strong first eleven. Um, I guess that it's the the issue of depth um, really across the board, um, and that some of that depth is is us relying on on some very young, inexperienced players. But I think, I mean, we saw last year that most of the time those young guys stepped in and did a remarkably good job. So um, hopefully that can continue this season. Yeah, and I think the 11 somewhat picks itself because we don't have that huge abundance of depth. I think um, the back line, certainly we've got, you know, long in goal, Lehigh, right back, Burke, Device, centre back, Kingsley, left back. Then a midfield trio of Stewart, Irvine and probably Henriksen. I think that's one question mark would be whether it's Henriksen or Terrell who starts. Um, And then, as you say, we do have a bit of depth there. We've got Batty who can come in for Stewart. Um, or, you know, for Irvine or Terrell, if we then shift the formation around a little bit. Um, and then a front three, probably, of Bowen and Grzycki on the wings, and then potentially Eves up top. I think he's had a few fitness issues. He, he hasn't played in the last two friendlies, so potentially too risky to start him against Swansea, so it's likely to be Dicko starting, maybe Eves off the bench. Um, and, 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 yeah, I, I guess it sort of picks itself and just based on how we've been playing in preseason. Yeah, I think um, unless something happens in the next couple of days, I'd probably be expecting Henriksen and Dicko to start. Um, from the reports that I read, Terrell didn't, again, didn't really take his opportunity to shine um, when he was given it. And Eves is just, yeah, I think just carrying a bit of a groin injury or something, groin or hamstring or something, I think, just a, um, but nothing too major from what I understand. So I'd expect Dicko to start um, and, yeah, probably Eves off the bench, um, you know, maybe midway through the second half or something. And so you mentioned before you'd be happy to take a draw. So you, you, you what, what's your sort of expectation for this one? Do you think we'll manage to grab a draw or do you reckon... Swansea at home too strong. Um, I I think we can grab a draw. I I mean, if I was gonna if I if I have to make a prediction, which I feel like you're gonna ask me to anyway, <laughs> um, I'd probably go for just a one-all draw. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd probably be similar. I think probably a one-one draw, or you know, as we're sort of making a habit, maybe a two-two draw. Um, seems to be our preferred scoreline at the moment in pre-season but yeah look if we can get a point on the board from the first game of the season um, I'd be quite happy with that Um, and then just before we wrap things up we we're going to start doing a sort of a new segment for this year called football flashbacks we'll we'll sort of try and find a game um, from from you know recent history that we can sort of reminisce about and, and, and remember and, and, and chat about for a little bit um, and sort of try and get it to align with the period of the season that we're in. Um, so very easy first game of the season to look back at our 2010 season opener against Swansea as well. Um, Nigel Pearson was our manager at the time. Brendan Rogers was Swansea's manager at the time. So um, a little bit of a change in personnel since then. Then, Haven't we had a few 2 0 opening day yeah. victories against Swansea? Didn't well, we get them like, in the Premier League? With, uh, it was uh, the second game of the season. So we was beat, it second? We oh, okay. Leicester to, oh, cause I, I had that exact thought as well. I thought, hey, we've had a few 2 0 wins <laughs> over Swansea. And yeah, so there was that 2 0 second game of the season where, was it uh, Maloney and Hernandez, I want to say, scored? Was that the game where Hernandez and, and was it Diamande both no, tried was, to block? That, that was the Leicester game. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, just... yeah. No, but oh. that was that was that period. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. no. Th- so this so Swansea game twenty ten was um, Bostock scored a, a crazy goal from uh, you know thirty yards or something like that to to open the scoring, and then Ashby I think with a tap in 
right um, at the end of the game. Um, I guess this, the, the, the interesting aspects of this one, obviously it was right after our relegation from our first spell in the Premier League. And, you know, um, there was a lot of doom and gloom around the club. I think the club was in quite dire financial straits and Pearson had come in, was sort of cutting the cloth, we'd moved a lot of players out and we still had... Um, a semi-reasonable lineup, I guess you'd say, from you know former Premier League players. So we had Duke in goal, we had Zayati, uh, Andy Dawson, Gardner, and I guess looking at the lineup, I, I guess maybe it was Kilban as our back four, and then Ashby, Bostock, Kenny, Atkinson, and Solano as our midfield with Garcia up top. Um, Solano, I, as a, as I remember, it was sort of just a free transfer we'd brought in who just really. Um, you know, it was right in the, the dying embers of his career and was just one of those sorts of free transfers we just tried to grab and, and, and bolster the squad. I, I feel like we got Robbie Corrin a little bit later because I think I was actually at Corrin's debut against Millwall, so it's a little way into the season. Um, but yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of expectation going into this game and, and you know, Swansea ended up getting promoted that season to the Premier League. So... Um, they were quite a decent team, and, and I guess similar to this season, potentially, um, as we were talking about before, maybe they just took a little while to get going. Um, but, yeah, very impressive to come away with a 2-0 win from that, and I think it was a, a couple of months later the club was eventually sold, and, you know, we sort of know what happened after that, but everything started to pick up a little bit. Um, money started to come in and signed a few more players and, and what have you, but at the time, you look, kind of look at that lineup and you think that was a very... And, you know, off the bench, we had Devitt and Cullen coming on and, and Barmby sort of um, in the last couple of years of his career as well. Um, but, yeah, you know, it, it's 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 interesting to see Ashby lining up in that game. I know he basically missed the whole of the 09-10 season with injury, so it was great to see that he played that game and, and got on the score sheet as well. And, um, yeah, it's sort of... It's interesting when you look at the uh, the team that got us promoted to the Premier League in the first place and you remember all the big names and it's it's kind of nice to still see that they were still um, still around in the team at, at that point as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I am going to admit I did not see this game, but um, in saying that, just looking at that lineup, um, there's a few, you know, um, almost Hull City royalty, like na- names of royalty in there, some really... Yeah. Um, you know, D- uh, Dawson and Ashby, um, you know, there's fond memories of Garcia and, you know, Kenny is, was a um, promising young footballer. Um, yeah, and, and Duke as well. I mean, Duke, Duke was always one who, um, uh, he was sort of back up to my hill for most of his City career and he was involved in the, um, in the promotion to the Premier League as well. But yeah, I guess he sort of goes under the radar a little bit. And I think... I can't remember when he left us that season. I don't know if it was... It must have been almost around that time or maybe it was halfway through that season because my memory then is that for the next couple of years, we uh, sort of just played goalkeeper lottery where we would just try and grab a player on loan from an Arsenal or whoever. And, you know, we had the Guzan and the Manoni and Galashki and uh, there was, and Ben Amos as well, I think, were the ones that, that we, we loaned in from United and Liverpool and Arsenal and, and everyone. So... Um, he was sort of the last guard of that that sort of stable goalkeeper regime until um, McGregor and McGregor and uh, Jakubovic, I guess, came in. Um, but but yeah, look, it's a, it's an interesting lineup when you look at it and you, you kind of cast. You know, I, I remember I think I was over in England when we were playing that game, and I remember watching highlights on TV of it. And yeah, I mean, the Bostock goal is really the only thing that stands out for me from that game. Um, as you know, being something quite remarkable, and I, I think he's actually linked with a, lo- a move back to the Premier League. Oh, sorry, not Premier League to the Championship now. Um, I think at the time he was a Spurs player that we'd loaned in, but I think he's over in France now or something, uh, somewhere in Europe. Um, but but yeah, look, so you know, almost ten years ago that game, nine years ago now, um, Brendan Rodgers at Swansea got them promoted, and and we sort of may do that season under Pearson, I guess, um, for the most part. And then I think it was the next year that um, Barnby came in and then Bruce not long, not too long after that. But, um, yeah, look, we'll, we'll try each week to find a game that we can um, sort of look back on a little bit and sort of, I guess, reminisce or um, appreciate how, thing, how times have changed, I guess, since then. But, uh, yeah, did you have any final thoughts on, on clashes with Swansea? Um, no, I, 
I don't know. I think we've um, I think we've got a pretty um, we've always I think enjoyed a really nice um, like just healthy rivalry with Swansea. We've, I don't think there's a, I can't think of any games that have ever um, been you know wildly one sided. For if just in recent memory, we've had a pretty good um, nice even even competition with them. But um, I think um, just in terms of of the... Was it Swansea? Was it Swansea? Sorry, was it Swansea where um, George Boyd got that that header in the one nil win to keep us well to to confirm safety in was it uh, thirteen fourteen when we made the FA Cup final? I have a f- I, I just had this memory. I think it was Swansea that we played in that game where um, uh, that was quite a quite a nice moment as well. But but yeah, I mean you're right that that it's been quite level with them in in general. Yeah, and I was just gonna say that um, in terms of you know looking at these get ga- these sorts of games and everything it's just nice to just just to acknowledge the the club's history and look at it and and bring it bring it forward to light it bring it into the light um just to you know and just to compare and see you know what it's it all hasn't always been as you know the club hasn't always been surrounded by the the doom and gloom that seems to have followed it the last few years so you know there's light at the end of the tunnel and you know hopefully within the next you know year year or two you know we can we can move back towards a place you know a place like that yeah absolutely okay well um thanks for coming on dan and uh we've got lots to look forward to this weekend and and for the season to come absolutely thanks for having me no worries and thank you everyone for listening in we'll we'll be back uh in a week's time to dissect the result against swansea and uh Look ahead to, I think we've got the uh, the League Cup game against Tranmere next week as well, so we can look ahead to that game and, and then to our, um, our our further championship fixtures. Yeah, so we, we play Tranmere, uh, what is it, Wednesday morning. So yeah, we'll try and have an episode done uh, next Monday or Tuesday evening our time and uh, look ahead to that one. So until then, come on City! You've been listening to the official Hull City Australia podcast. For more discussion, join us on Facebook in the Hull City AFC Australian Supporters Group or follow us on Twitter at Hull City AFC Oz. The music was created by Amber and Black.